Hey there fellow game crafters and welcome back to the Average Joe Josie channel where we fearlessly navigate the uncharted digital jungles, unveil hidden secrets, combat formidable villains and skillfully dodge treacherous obstacles. From a humble beginnings we forged a formidable arsenal of knowledge and today our adventure continues. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the realms of game development mastery. In our last thrilling episode, we bestowed our player with an epic superpower, empowering them to conquer foes with unmatched prowess. However, the game took an unexpected turn as we granted enemies the deadly ability to strike back, adding a layer of challenge to our digital realm. It's a game of power dynamics and survival, and if you've missed the game changer, don't worry, just go back in the playlist and go catch up on the fun. Now, get ready for the last stretch of our game development journey. In today's video, we'll keep it simple and learn how to add checkpoints. When our player faces a setback, these checkpoints will be their digital safety nets, making sure that they bounce back to the most recent one. Let's wrap up this tutorial series with a bang. Step 1. Create an object for the checkpoint. The first step is to create a checkpoint object. By this point in the tutorial, you should be familiar with the process. If you need a refresher though, just go back to the video where we explain how to add objects. To create an object for the checkpoint, we do the following. Create a sprite object named checkpoint. Then use the bush.png asset as the image for the checkpoint. Then drag one or more instances of the object into the scene. Step 2. Save the player's coordinates when they reach a checkpoint. When a player reaches a checkpoint, you can use variables to save the coordinates of that checkpoint. Then, when the player dies, you can send them back to those coordinates. You can access the X and the Y coordinates of an object with the following syntax. Object name.x and object name.y. These statements are both examples of expressions. To save the coordinates of a player object, when they reach a checkpoint, we do the following. We create a new event. Create a collision condition that checks if the player object has collided with the checkpoint object. Create a value of a scene variable action that creates a checkpoint x variable with a value of checkpoint.x. Then create a value of a scene variable action that creates a checkpoint y variable with a value of checkpoint.y. Step 3. Send the player to the previous checkpoint. When the player object collides with a slime object, the delete an object action deletes the player object from the scene. But since the game has checkpoints now, it doesn't make sense to delete the player object. Rather, we send the player back to the previous checkpoint. We do the following. Remove the delete an object action. Create a position of an object action for the player object. For each of the modification sign fields, select the set to. Then set the x position coordinate to variable checkpoint x. Set the y position coordinate to variable checkpoint Y. If you preview the game, dying after reaching a checkpoint then sends you back to the checkpoint. Step 4. Set the player's default coordinates. The checkpoint X and the checkpoint Y variables don't exist until the player reaches a checkpoint. So if a player dies before reaching a checkpoint, GDevelop then sends the player back to the default coordinates which is 0, 0. This may cause a problem if the following is true. Something else exists at the default coordinates, you know, such as enemy, or if there isn't a platform beneath the default coordinates. To fix this, set the value of checkpoint X and checkpoint Y variables to the initial coordinates of the player object. Then the default coordinates are defined by where you place the player object in the scene editor. To set the default coordinates, we do the following. Create a new event. Add the at the beginning of the scene condition to the event. Create a value of the scene variable action that creates a checkpoint x variable with a value of player.x. Create a value of a scene variable that creates a checkpoint y variable with a value of player.y. So now, if you preview the game and you die before you reach a checkpoint, the player starts at the beginning. So, there you have it folks, we've reached the end of this tutorial. I encourage you to dive into the world of GDevelop and explore its fantastic features. With a plethora of events, actions and other gems, there's a world of possibilities waiting for your game. Experiment with creating a start menu, 
adding more levels and crafting a satisfying completion screen. Don't forget to explore the art of adding boundaries to your games for that extra polish. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next GDevelop Game Jam. If this tutorial series proved beneficial for you, a little thumbs up, a subscribe and a friendly tap on that notification bell would mean the world. Thank you for joining me on this exciting adventure of crafting your first platformer game. I'm eager to witness the games that you create. Stay well, keep creating and may the odds be forever in your favor.